So this is you. This is a snapshot of what's going on right now, every second, for every cell in your body. Since it's after lunch, this is exactly what's going on right now uh, <laughs> to your lunch. <laughs> so all this complexity, all these reactions, all these uh, interconnected uh, parts, what are they for? So your body, in order to create some of the key molecules that it needs to survive, has to go and actually take these molecules from simple molecules and come up with complex reactions to make them. So acetyl-CoA is one example of this. Uh, it wouldn't come up in nature by itself. And like many chemicals that we need, it either wouldn't come up by itself, or it would take too long to make it, or it wouldn't be made in enough quantities. So looking at this, this is an elegant solution that our bodies have derived after billions and billions of years of trying. And they've made some pretty incredible things, including us. So we are looking at this now and saying, how can I actually harness some of this complexity and this elegance? So synthetic biology is the answer to that question. Synthetic biology seeks to harness the power of our genetics, of creatures' genetics, organisms' genetics, in order to create some amazing things. So think of it as using genes as a programming language and taking cells and creating little factories out of them to create novel products of high value. So why would we need this? What, what are some possible uses for it? So algae is one organism that we've already been uh, commencing uh, engineering. And it has some incredible properties that make it incredibly useful to us. So as you can see behind me, we have these little green disks. Those are actually chloroplasts, which help take solar energy and convert it into useful chemical energy. So we've begun now taking these chloroplasts, engineering the algae, and in some cases, coming up with interesting ways of taking byproducts of, say, combustion and transforming it into useful products, such as here, butanol. So butanol is a fuel substitute. So using synthetic biology, we've already begun taking things like algae, harvesting solar energy, and transforming byproducts of combustion into novel fuels. So incidentally, uh, Dr. J. Craig Venter, one of his companies, Synthetic Genomics, actually received $600 million from Exxon to try to commercialize this type of technology. So we have major problems in the 21st century. We all know it. We've heard it before. There's hunger. We have health issues. There's an energy crisis looming. And of course, now sustainability. So synthetic biology has opened up some interesting doors that we can actually seek to fix these problems with. So one example is artemisinin. It's an anti-malarial drug that in nature is very difficult to acquire. You have to extract it from a plant. And that, uh, that makes its price incredibly high. And, and it's, not, uh, it's not where it could be in terms of uh, medicine. So recently, uh, scientists at Berkeley have found a way of synthesizing artemisinin. So this would render it much cheaper. And it would allow us to actually treat large parts of the globe that right now we couldn't afford to treat. Similarly, in the uh, food area, there's another of Dr. J. Craig Venter's uh, companies who's seeking to synthesize organisms that actually protect crops. So we're not actually making you know, franken crops, but we're trying to protect crops so that they can, uh, they can s uh, survive and actually feed many people that would otherwise die of starvation uh, if these crops were wiped out. So I already mentioned algae biofuels. This is a very hot area right now. There's a lot of companies trying to uh, make variations on this and, and really make it work and scale it. And the beauty is, because we're using things like algae that are uh, harnessing solar energy, by definition, all this is sustainable. So what is it really? Synthetic biology is combining engineering with biology. And specifically, there's three main tenant that, tenants that it's trying to integrate. One of them is standardization of parts, uh, modeling, and testing. So this is the Burj Khalifa. Uh, this is in Dubai. It's the tallest man-made structure on planet Earth. Um, it's about 3,000 feet. And just for scale, it's about two times the size of the Empire State Building. So how, how is this possible? How can we make these types of structures? It's the engineering. It's the tenets of engineering. So standard parts. We have to make sure all the parts fit together when they arrive. Models to, to actually give us blueprints in order to actually make them in, in the right order. And then testing to make sure that it'll stand. And this is a testament to the fact that these tenants have had amazing effects. So for synthetic biology, instead of nuts and bolts, we have chunks of DNA that are reusable 
and we're hoping to build upon them. Instead of blueprints of buildings, computational power is now starting to really catch up and give us incredible potential. So we're not quite there yet, but this is a rendition of a, of a complex molecule. And in the near future, we're hoping to really be able to create blueprints of organisms that we're designing. Testing, instead of wind tunnels and uh, model airplanes, we're actually using um, test tubes and rapid prototyping systems. So what are some of the possibilities? I've already shared with you some of these already going on. But what's really exciting for me about synthetic biology is what hasn't yet happened and can. So personalized medicines is one option. If you can synthesize things cheaply, maybe that'll open the door to synthesize a cure for you, for your illness right now. Right now, the, the drug industry is not there. It cannot do that. So this could usher in a whole era of personalized medicine. Also, architecture will be affected by this. So this is a rendition of Vincent Cayabo's uh, floating buildings. They're uh, powered by algae creating hydrogen, uh, and it actually floats the buildings. So can you imagine Manhattan? If you think Manhattan looks complicated now, uh, <laughs> you know, add some floating buildings. And, and this is just the beginning. Um, so another, this is an artist's rendition of what Mars would look like if we terraformed it. So the same technology that we have now, these algae biofuel technologies that we're starting to play with, this is just the beginning. So what I see in the future would be entire planets with interconnected parts being given life. So this is what Mars would look like with, uh, with water, oxygen, atmosphere, and an ecosystem. Similar to Earth, in a sense. So I ask you, what would you do with this technology and $600 million? What would you see happening? <laughs> Essentially, I think NYU is perfectly poised right now to, to be at the forefront of this revolution. And so I challenge you to think, how can I make my world better or create a new one? Thank you.